my name is Dr. Ms. Khan. I specialize in revision surgeries. I practice in Midtown Manhattan. Today, I wanted to talk to you about the complications of cold sculpting. Uh, cold sculpting, as you, as we all know, um, it's a fairly common procedure, very popular, um, a non-invasive way of actually removing the fat or uh, making the fat disappear over the course of a few treatments. Uh, the technology relies upon selective cooling of the fat with the help of these certain applicators that are applied to the surface area of the skin and then the fat is allowed to cool um, under the impact of those applicators. Uh, the concept is actually pretty uh, interesting and it's um, you, you know been in use for quite some time. Uh, some people they get very good results from it and some people unfortunately end up in some complications and that's the uh, the whole, today's video is all about that. So I have treated a few different kinds of complications of cold sculpting but today we're going to only be talking talking about a very um, sort of like a not a very pleasant complication that can happen as a result of cool sculpting is called paradoxical adipose hyperplasia. Paradoxical meaning that it was the untoward effect that we wanted actually the opposite of it and the complete opposite of what we desired ended up happening, uh, which means that instead of the fat going away, the fat got bigger and harder and became tender and became very unsightly. Uh, this complication is more commonly seen in people of Hispanic descent, more so in men, and also on the abdominal areas. Now, the patients that I have treated, um, none of them were Hispanic or men. Uh, there were abdomen areas involved. However, abdomen is the most common area that is also being treated with the cool sculpting anyway. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we will just discuss this particular uh, complication. The risk of this complication is approximately about 2% of all the cases that are being done. And then, um, you know, there are ways to actually make it better. Um, I have my own technique of how I treat this and that's what I will be discussing with you today. Okay, so let's just go through the case. Uh, we will, I have put together a slideshow so that will make things a little bit easier and faster for us. Uh, this is how the patient first presented to me. Now, as you can see, there's like a huge lump over here, another lump over here, a big lump over here, and another lump over here. This patient had eight sites that were treated with the cold sculpting. There are four on the front of the abdomen, two on the sides, and two on the inner thigh. And um, here I have just defined like exactly what uh, PAH or paradoxical adipose hyperplasia it stands for. So she just took a hard, tender, large mass on cold sculpting treatment sites. It develops approximately three months out. And it can look like this very uneven and very hard masses wherever the applicator went on. So let's just evaluate, see what's going on over here. Now, if you draw a line across the midline of the patient and then one running all the way in the horizontal way, um, you can see the asymmetry on both sides as you can, it's now evident a little bit more. Now you see how the umbilicus has shifted off the midline. It's more towards the right side of the patient and then a huge lump over here, rather smaller lump over here, rather smaller here, but another big lump on this side. So both sides of the abdomen, they do not actually uh, look alike, and uh, one side reacted completely different than the other, but they all four developed the PAH in their areas. Now, the treatment for something like this, you know, it could be anywhere from doing a tummy tuck, cut the abdomen from all the way down from here to here, and take this whole thing out surgically excise it um, or I mean that that's okay if in case the patient is interested in that and that's fine that's another option for the patient but this patient is fairly young and she did not want to have a big scar that was running all the way from pelvis to pelvis so we had to pick up something that was minimally invasive but was able to give her the best outcome and that was my approach for her um, it was a long case I'll be honest with you I was actually very tired at the end of it but um, you know this is also the side view profile so as you can see there is like a little uh, big of a, a bit of a lump over here, some lumpiness over here going on. And as from this side, you can see how distorted the abdomen is. There's a constriction sort of like happening at the very level of the umbilicus as well. 
Um, so this is the patient's B4 photos uh, that I picked up and also before the surgery with all the surgical markings and stuff. So this is her results uh, once she was completely healed up and whatnot. So this is her from, be from behind uh, with her arms up. As you can see, it's all like lumpy and asymmetrical. And this is how we were able to get it after the surgery. Um, and then over here is actually a very nice profile before and after photo. So uh, here you could probably see the large masses like all the way here and then a little bit over here too, but they're all smoothed out in the after shot. And this is even better um, after shot on this side. Um, you know, there wasn't actually a lot of, uh, the, this mass wasn't as big as this guy was. So anyway, we were able to make it more symmetrical. Now, the important thing was also the inner thigh, that she developed it on the inner thigh, which has hardly been ever been reported that the PAH can occur on the inner thigh, but here it is, it can. And so she had it all the way over here, and I was able to smooth it all out, took the entire mass completely all the way out. And this is her abdominal uh, configuration after the surgery. So, um, you know, I did not have to do any kind of a surgery in the peri-umbilical area to slide the umbilicus back towards the midline um, it just kind of came all the way back on its own and I can the only explanation I have for that is that all of these masses that were quite large on the right side they were sort of like creating like a pulley uh, reaction to pull the umbilicus and to kind of make it like come towards one side as you could see there's like a constriction band over here as well and it looks like as if something is actually pulling the umbilicus towards that one side so when i went in there and i was trying to revise all the scarring that was happening underneath it in an also in an attempt to actually remove all of the pah then uh, once i released all the scars the umbilicus kind of shifted all the way back so i didn't have to cut it open and slide it towards the midline as you can see i've drawn a line over here to say like before and after after photos that it all became central and it uh, like there's a little bit if it's a tiny bit off midline but it's not completely off of midline so this was actually her results and um, once pH has been treated it's not gonna come back um, so you know you it's actually just a complication so once you have taken care of it it is good to go. Um, for somebody who gets a complication like this, it's quite massive and it's very hard and difficult also for the patient to live with. Um, and these masses, are, they can become very tender. So if that's the case, then I would always recommend that the patient undergo uh, deep sedation to have the surgery done and not under local anesthesia. Even though I give an option to both, but this would be something like this, I would always recommend that the patient undergo deep sedation. I hope this video was helpful for especially with somebody who is seeking treatment for uh, this type of a complication or any other kind of complication due to coat sculpting. Uh, feel free to contact us. The best way to reach us is via email. Uh, you can also safely send us some photos if in case that's what you want us to give you an idea if this can be helped or not. Um, I have another uh, video, very good video, about the frequently asked questions on revision surgery, so feel free to watch that. Um, I'm sure that most of your questions can be answered by just watching that one, but if you have anything in particular pertinent to your situation, then please feel free to email me.